Hello and welcome to Mr. Barton's Web Whiz video number six, where once again we're going to take a very quick tour around one of my favourite mathematical websites. Now, I know I say this every single week, but this week's website is an absolute classic. It's the National Library of Visual Manipulatives. So let's find it. The initial should be enough National Library of Visual Manipulatives, and there it is. Now, this website is, has been set up by Utah University and it contains loads of amazing applets, so small computer programs. And what I love about them is that they can convey in a visual way some pretty nasty topics. Now, one thing I should say is that it's arranged in the American school system. So you've got to just kind of get your head a, a little bit around that. Um, from I, I'm no expert myself, but I tend to think of nine to 12 as your kind of key stage four, six to eight as your key stage three. And then this is more your kind of primary school and transition resources. So if I just click on one of these, for example, so this is geometry grades three to five and here are all your little applets now they do some are brilliant some aren't so brilliant so they do take a bit of uh, kind of searching around them but i've picked out five of my favorites so the first one is this one congruent triangles and i've got it loaded up here now congruent triangles is one of those topics that if you just tell the kids the uh, all the conditions of congruency it means very little but with this little applet you get to the kids get to have a little play around with it so this is demonstrating the side 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 so you've got three uh, blue lines and three red lines and each of the blue lines is the same length as one of the red lines and the job of the students is to make a triangle now shape and space is one of my absolute worst topics and i can't visualize anything so i'm going to be pretty rubbish at this but let me try again just talk, talk amongst yourselves whilst i'm faffing around with this thing so fingers crossed if i bring that and oh no no again i should have rehearsed this there we go Woohoo! one triangle down now if i make another triangle with this the whole idea of course is that it doesn't matter where you put your lines there's only one possible triangle that could be made well it'd help if i could make any triangle at the moment i think we're getting close i think we're zooming in on it oh, for... come on come on are you serious oh, yes finally now those triangles are they the same well the beauty of this is that you can just have a little rotation of them just to see so if i take my green triangle here and I give it a little rotate and fingers crossed I should find that it fits exactly on top so those triangles are congruent. Dear me that took a while. Anyway <laughs> you can do that for SAS, ASA and SSA all the conditions of congruency. Let's have a look at one that I'm a little bit better on a nice little tessellation app. So if I uh, click here we get a lovely hexagon and I can experiment or the students can experiment with fitting lots of nice shapes. Now what I like about this is when you get quite close the shape snap to it so you don't get left with any nasty little gaps and stuff so the students can create some nice patterns and investigate why some shapes some shapes do have gaps and some shapes don't so that's quite a nice little one now here's here's a good one and well some people think it's good some people won't it depends whether you teach the balance method for algebra it's quite hard to make algebra equations visual but this is quite a nice way so the challenge for the students is to set up the equation so we'll chuck a couple of x's on there and a couple of ones on there one two three and on the other side we are told that we want an x plus six and because these are equal to each other we know that these must balance so three four five and six there's a perfect balance and then we hit continue and then we're asked what we want to do to both sides so i think i'm going to take away an x from both sides and you can see how um, we're going to get towards the answer here now i'm going to take away three blocks from both sides and eventually i get x equals three and it shows you in a similar way how you can do that for um, equations with negatives in and so on so that's worth playing around with last couple um, it handles probability quite nicely um, here you can set up a spinner so um, i'm going to have three of my compartments be in purple and say two of them red there's my spinner and i spin it round now that's all well and good but what's really nice is that you can keep the results recording so as i spin everyone it hits it records it for me and i'm going to do say 10 spins in a row give that a spin and then we can use that to maybe estimate the probability and compare the theoretical to the experimental and all that kind of stuff so i thought that was very nice and the last one i'll show you is the classic monty hall problem where you've got three doors and you select a door and then you're told where the rubbish prize is and you ask if you want to stick or switch um, i'm going to switch there yay i've won now you can keep playing this and the nice thing is it records whether 
um, how many you win compared to how many you lose and then you can get over the misconception that it doesn't matter whether you switch or stick so look it's a brilliant website to have a play around with there's hundreds of stuff on here as I say it does take a little bit of searching around to find the gold but there's plenty of gold on there and um, if you've used this resource and you like it this website um, or you've got some kind of favorite applets on there please 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 knit back onto the Tez resort um, Wes, web whiz page and share it with everybody and I will be back with a fresh video next week. Take care. Bye for now.